David Cohn, my broadcast partner. David, you will never say, call a woman a chick on the air, right? Well, yeah, I heard you talking about pigs, and I, you know, I figured it was time for me to come on. So, <laughs> 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 David, how difficult has this whole five-day period been for Joe Girardi, you think? Extremely difficult, without a doubt. Uh, you know, Joe obviously is a guy who does not enjoy the day-in and day-out interaction with, with the media and some of the questions that come his way. He doesn't like getting second-guessed. He's a sensitive guy. And uh, I think, without a doubt, this has uh, impacted him and, and hurt him. And uh, part of it's not his fault. You know, he's kind of a victim of circumstances. But nonetheless, you know, uh, he was... He was right in the middle of it, and uh, I think Alex was very honest with his answer today and saying this last week it has been awkward for both of them, and I think you could see it on Joe Girardi's face at this point. Do you think that if Alex played every day, he'd be better than what he's shown over the last two for 32? Uh, probably. You know, you know. I, I think you, you could say that, uh, you know, Alex – if he had regular at-bats, he'd probably be better than 190 or whatever his average is. But I think the argument against that is you go back to the second half of last year and you've got a almost a full year body of work, over 400 at-bats, where he's had the same type of numbers. So you can right. say that the decline actually started in the second half of last year. If you're a numbers guy, you can bend and twist the numbers any way you want. I think once the Yankees made the decision to go young and trade Andrew Miller and, and, and Chapman and, and go ahead and pull the plug that uh, the youth should be here. You know, I think people are anxious. The Yankee fans are anxious to see an Aaron Judge or a Tyler Austin or Luis Sessa last night was, was dominating in his two innings of work. Let's get the best arms up here. Let's get the best young bats up here. All these guys have proven themselves in the minor leagues and had great years in AAA. So let's go ahead with the youth movement then. So this last week has really only increased the awkwardness because you kind of feel like, that, you know, that, that they're stuck, that they've been stuck for a week. And those are three important games. I think they're very fortunate to have won two out of three in Boston with a bit of a compromised watch roster. David, please tell me, because none of us that are broadcasting right now or are listening or watching could experience this. What's it like for Alex today coming to the ballpark, knowing it's the final time, at least as a Yankee, and then when he takes off the uniform, after the game, this is something that you guys have done since you were six or seven, and you were always the best in your neighborhood. So, what's it like today? Is it is it very emotional? Well, absolutely. I you know I still think Alex is is uh, he's, he's a little stunned right now. He's putting a lot of these emotions on the back burner, and he's going to have uh, he's going to have some fallout to deal with emotionally, without a doubt. I mean, this guy is a gym rat, probably more than anybody I've ever been around in my life, and I've been around a lot of guys who are diehard gym rats, guys who just eat and breathe and drink the game. And that's Alex. Uh, he'll watch the games this weekend. He'll watch. When he retires, every night he'll have a game on. You know, that's the type of guy he is because he loves the game so much. So I really think the fallout's going to come later for Alex. And I think next week, once it hits him and he's sitting at home and he takes a look at everything that's happened and everything that's in front of him that, we, you know, he may he – may, make some surprising decisions next week. Uh, anything could happen at this point with Alex. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you when he starts taking those phone calls from other teams. And I think there will be a team or two that might ask his interest. Do you think he'll play? I think it will be very tempting for him, Don, without a doubt. Uh, it, you know, there's, everybody has ego. You have to have a little bit of arrogance and a little bit of ego to play this game at a high level. And, uh, you know, that's why sometimes the young guys are better because uh, the, the – they're youthful and arrogant. Sometimes that, that serves them well. And as you get older, you become more well-rounded and you, you become more realistic. And it kind of hurts you at the end of your career. I don't really see that with Alex. Alex still thinks he can play, without a doubt. So I'm sure it will be very tempting for him. But I also know that he's got his eye on the big picture. And I do know that, and everybody knows, and Michael and I have talked about this, that he wants to be an owner, too. So he's not only plotting his strategy potentially to come back, but he's also laying the groundwork for future work inside of baseball, whether that's broadcasting in the short term or being part of a big ownership group. And he's got the resources to do it, without a doubt. He could easily put together an ownership group to buy a major league team. The problem is there's, not, there's no teams for sale right now. And, and in the foreseeable future, it doesn't look like there's going to be teams that are going to become, become available on the market. I'll tell you what, I I am one of those, David, and we're talking with David Cohn. I'll be doing the game with David and, and Paul O'Neill tonight on Yes. 
I think that he wants to play. I think there's a chance he will play. But I also think that he's an astute enough businessman to realize the value of the connection to the Yankees, David. And if he does play somewhere else, there's no guarantee that the job that Hal Steinmer has laid out for him is going to be there if he signs somewhere else. And that might be the tipping point to have him never play again. Well, that's a great point, uh, Michael. And even if you have sorted through all of Alex's statements, one of the things that struck me was that he said that if he did decide to come back or make a different decision, that he would clear it with Hal first. So to me, that was that was pretty telling. Uh, you know, after all of this, and this is the most famous release we've ever seen in any sport, and it's national coverage and big media day tonight for a guy who's actually getting released. I mean, uh, <laughs> it is just a remarkable set of circumstances. Yes, the Yankee, the Yankee connection means a lot to him. Uh, that's why I think he jumped at the opportunity. I think becoming a part of Monument Park is a big deal for him, uh, potentially getting a plaque in Monument Park, considering the fact that a lot of the baseball writers probably won't vote him into the Hall of Fame. So that makes that monument in, 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 uh, in, in the center field of Yankee Stadium mean a lot to him right now. So, yes, Michael, I think that's a big factor for him. And the fact that he has to clear it with Hal first, and he admitted that he would want to clear it with Hal before he made any decisions. To me, speaks volumes. 